This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Only time my life makes any sense now is when I'm on the back of my horse. Many's the night I stayed up reading about the escapades of Jesse James robbing banks. I would hold out my hand and consider what it might be like to be missing a finger, to feel what he might be feeling, to think as he did, to spend your time thinking about the man, studying the man. Christ, what do I sound like? But no matter how hard you try, trying to be like him, trying to be with him. You can always come away missing something. All I ever wanted since I was a young boy was to tell epic stories, to invigorate and exhilarate. Approximately two years ago when I was completely lost, unemployed, really in between phases of my life, I did something that seemed like a total waste at the time. I pulled out my cell phone, recorded a video that was shaky in 240p about how I was not jerking off and how it was changing my life. I'm kind of embarrassed by those videos even though I do still believe in those ideas, but I leave them up because I want to show that you can start from anywhere and you can still move in the direction of the kind of stories you want to tell or the kind of person you want to be. That video got 30 views within a few days and it dawned on me that I potentially had access to 10 sets of minds because at least 20 of those views were me. I now potentially had access to people who I could negotiate with to hear my story. From that moment on, something clicked and I quickly became obsessed with a space that I really did not have a lot of experience in prior. I developed heroes. Now YouTube is a vast ocean. You or I could only be exposed to like a droplet out of the entire sea of creators that are out there. But the people who I gravitated towards had cameras lighting, gear, editing software, laptops that could handle terabytes. They had charisma, they had talent. All I had to start with was my voice, my feeling, and a deep, desperate desire to be able to tell a story to someone. Initially, I didn't even care what that story was as long as I could find someone to lend me their ears. I saw this platform as an opportunity. Two years in now, and I must confess to you how strange all of this feels. I'm still a small YouTuber by all respects, but now I'm no longer unemployed. I now have access to the filming gear, some lighting setup, the kind of stuff that I only fantasized I would have one day. It occurred to me that even though I'm still early in my own content creation journey, there might be a few people out there who have the same desires that I have, to express what's within them, to tell their own stories. Some people who might see what I have and feel the same way about me as I might have done for my own heroes in this space as if what the other person is doing is superior and unattainable. Maybe they feel that it's too distant from what they could ever do. In this video, I want to address the fallacy that is that line of thinking. In Minnesota, the threat of winter always looms near, even when it's summer. I feel like I'm mentally preparing for the onslaught of the cold and dark, even as I'm driving around in this heat. And often in preparation for despair, I turn to films. There's one film in particular called The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford that I watch every fall in preparation for the winter. I really don't know when I would ever recommend this movie to anyone, especially if you like struggle with sadness. This movie is basically depression packaged into an mp4, but for some reason I deeply love it and it's because I relate so much to the character of Robert Ford in the movie. In this narrative, Robert Ford is a man who has this sick obsessive love for the outlaw Jesse James. He acknowledges the fact that they're both 5 feet 8 inches tall, they grew up in similar family types, they even have the same eye color. Ultimately his obsession with his hero leads to tragedy for everyone involved. It's perhaps one of the great American myths surrounding betrayal and it's a movie that sparked my interest as soon as I saw the trailer 14 years ago at this point. The reason I love the movie is because it speaks to a universal feeling, that feeling of imposter syndrome. We all have heroes, people we idolize, and if those heroes are especially good at what they do, then we somehow see ourselves as lesser to their work. Unconsciously maybe, we feel ourselves unworthy of reaching the same level of talent or success, and we might automatically assume that the narrative of our own life involves us just staying as a spectator in some overarching story that belongs to someone else. The truth is, we're wrong. Everyone we've ever idolized Idolized. Everyone who has reached heights of grandeur is a human being. And while for the moment their talents may seem to supersede, understand that you are no less. What one man or woman can do, another can do. You might have once encountered this famous speech by Steve Jobs. He'd said, When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is, and your life is just to live inside the world. Try not to bash into the walls too much. Try to have a nice family life, have fun, save a little money. Life can be much broader once you discover the simple fact that everything around you that is called life was made up by people, people who are no smarter than you. And you can change this life, you can influence it. Once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. You're the man who killed Jesse James. He was my goddamn hero. Then when I joined up, 
he said. Welcome aboard, glad to have you. <laughs> Might have been the happiest day of my life. You know, he used to have those snakes he would keep around. <laughs> he would give them names. Names of enemies, he said. And then he'd chop off their heads and cook them in oil. <laughs> <laughs> so I did what I had to do. See, Floyd, every man's got a choice. You can either sit there on the side, watching your heroes do what you want to do, be the man you want to be. You take up arms, and you kill your goddamn heroes. A big thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. I've partnered with them once before and was happy to do so again because their product has been an exceptionally good value. A VPN, a virtual private network, is a service that allows you to connect to the internet via an encrypted tunnel to ensure your online privacy and protect your sensitive data. A VPN is commonly used to secure your connection in a public Wi-Fi space or to hide your IP address and make your browsing private. It also is very helpful in the sense that it can help you get access to regionally blocked content. For instance, one of my favorite Western movies isn't available on Netflix USA, but if I change my IP address to come from another country, which is something I can just look up, I can use Surfshark to log in and get to watching. Click the link in the description box, surfshark.deal slash Captain Sinbad to get 85% off of a two year subscription plan and to get an extra three months free of Surfshark VPN which only adds up to about like a couple dollars per month and get to watching great content while securing your online network. It's only a few bucks per month, but it protects your online identity and secures your digital life. Thank you Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. There are times now where I'm out on a shoot or working on a concept and I completely resonate with this sentiment because I'm just thinking to myself, who the heck am I to be calling himself an actor or calling himself a filmmaker? Even as someone who literally moved out to Los Angeles to pursue Hollywood, I was unable to tell people for almost a year and a half that I was an actor, and still, I feel kind of sheepish about it now. Putting the words actor in my bio on Instagram, it all felt very fake somehow, because I kept thinking to myself, who am I to be saying these things about myself? I've never booked a job, I've never gotten any work in this, I'm only just starting to learn this process of videography, and yet there are still people who are reaching out to me, asking me what lens I use. The same thing applies for me working in tech, people asking me how they can get a tech job themselves, or what programming language they should learn, and I can't help but think to myself, Dude, you have no idea. I only just learned this. I'm only just starting to figure out what these things are, what these things mean. That feeling of imposter syndrome as I go about making certain things that are in my mind, trying to put them out in the world, and then just wondering, do I actually have the stuff for this? It's a voice in my head that I'm battling with constantly. And I have to make that deliberate choice to ignore these whisperings in my brain telling me that I'm just faking it. Because the truth is when you do go out and do the thing, as soon as you start doing it, you become it. I remember talking to my acting teacher in Mumbai and telling him how much of a poser I felt when I was doing these scenes in Hindi. And he told me, as soon as you start acting, you are an actor. If you have a friend that you do a scene with and you rehearse and you give each other feedback, that's when you become an artist. That's when you become an actor. Same thing goes with camera work. If I pick up the camera, try to make a good composition and hit the record button, the fact that I'm a complete novice, that I'm still making this stuff up as I go, it doesn't matter because hitting the record button means that I am the thing. I consider the fact that when I wake up or when I'm cooking lunch or watching a movie or Googling for a line of code that I can use to solve a problem at work without figuring it out for myself, what I'm really thinking about in that moment is the story, the narrative, the lens, the aspiration I have to join my council of heroes as an equal rather than someone who just looks up to them. And the fact that I'm not there, but I can still see that vision out in front of me is a thought that brings me great joy, a deep focus and presence. I'm definitely not not there. But when I look back occasionally and I think about that guy two years ago on his cell phone in 240p, I realize I'm still that same guy. Nothing has changed except for those incremental steps, those small territories won in the grass, in the field, in the wheat, in the mud. And all that's required of me now is to do what he did then to get here. One of my friends told me, I don't believe in fake until you make it. I believe in embody it until you become it. And perhaps one day you do find that that thing about yourself that you only wished was true, dreamed was true, ended up being real after all. And it came from not only looking at your heroes and seeing what's great about them, but recognizing that you have that same kernel within you to take those strides, to move towards the goal, and to embody it. If you're new to this channel, my name is Nikhil. This channel is a combination between comedy sketches and more genuine videos like this one with topics in mind for the creative entrepreneur. 
We're also in the middle of the series that I've slowly been building up, which I'm calling the genre series, which sort of connects my love of movies and specific genres of movies with those genuine topics that I wanna share in these videos. So I'd love to get your thoughts on if you've been enjoying the genre series or if there's a specific movie genre or type of movie that you want me to pay homage to. But with that being said, living up to the image that we have of our heroes and facing that inner voice that doubts us when we say that we are a particular thing, like an actor or filmmaker, an artist, an entrepreneur, I wouldn't be surprised if that voice is always there, whispering us doubts and insecurities. But for those of us who are willing to press forward despite what that voice says, to us I say, oh, no.